everybody, welcome to your Teen Church message for today. It is absolutely lovely to have you join us. I just wish I could see you in person. Maybe next week I'll see you in person. Let's get started with a prayer. Lord God, I just thank you so much for this time and space where we can come and listen to your message today, Lord. Lord, I pray that you be with each and every single person in this message. And Lord, I just want to thank you so much for providing this beautiful rain, Lord, that it's, that it's just going to renew our land and just bring growth and regrowth, Lord. And I just thank you so much for that. And I thank you so much for this time that we have together. Lord, I pray that you open up our hearts and our minds and our ears to listen to your message today, Lord. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, do you like your name? Do you feel like your name and the meaning of your name kind of describes who you are? So, in English, so my name is Italian, Chiara. It's actually pronounced Chiara. But in English, my name means clear or light. And I kind of hope I bring some light into people's lives. Some people are given names because it has a special meaning to them and their family, or they're given names that will honor their grandparents or their parents or a family member. Do you also have a nickname? So my nickname, the story of my nickname was our previous youth pastor. I remember we all, a group of us went bowling and he he wrote C-H-I and then he forgot what the rest of my name was. So he just wrote C-H-I again. So my name was Chi Chi, and then from that day on, and it just stuck, and everyone knows me as Chi Chi. So that's how I got my nickname. Now, also, when I was really young, I thought my mom's name was Mom. And it kind of blew my mind at a really young age when I realized that her name was actually not Mom, that she had a real name. So at what age were you when you found out that your parents also had real names? Now, names are quite important as they are chosen and given to us, and they sort of create our identity and mold us into the people who we are today. Now, did you know that God also has other names? Now, I'm not saying the other names that other religions might use for him, but names that are actually also prevalent in the Bible and that were used in in, in history to talk about God. Some of those names were al Eloah, which means God, mighty, strong, prominent, Elohim, which means God the Creator, mighty and strong, Al Shaddai, which means God Almighty, and Jehovah Jireh, which means the God who provides. Now, these are just a few names of what people used to call God, and they're still quite prominently used, especially among, amongst the Jewish community and even some Christian communities, I'm sure. Now, for today's lesson, we'll just be focusing on the name Jehovah Jireh, which means the God who provides. Well, not God who provides, not the God, God who provides. So our Bible reading today comes from Genesis chapter 22 and from verse 1 to 14 and it reads, Abraham tested. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on, oh, excuse me, I'm a little bit lost. Okay, I'm going to read from verse 2. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out of his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. 
Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram, caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide, and to this day it is said, on this mountain of the Lord it will be provided. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So this is quite a well-known story, but for those of you who don't know about it, Isaac was the long-awaited child that Abraham and Sarah wanted. See, God promised Abraham and his wife Sarah a baby, and Isaac was it. And they had Isaac at a really old age in their life. As we read in verse 2, it says, Then God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Now, imagine that. Like God has just given him a gift. They've been waiting and praying for this gift. Now God gives them a gift. And now God's like, listen... You're going to have to sacrifice him. And we see that Abraham is really, really, really obedient. And he actually goes on that journey to sacrifice his son because God told him to. And we see that Isaac didn't know anything about what was going to happen until the last minute. We also read that the journey took three days and Isaac knew nothing. But Abraham told him that God will provide a lamb. Now, because of Abraham's faith, when it came time for Abraham to sacrifice, to sacrifice Isaac, an angel stopped him. And when Abraham looked up, there was a ram caught by its horns for Abraham to sacrifice. In verse 14, we read, So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it said, On, the mountain of, on this mountain, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. See, in the last moment, because of Abraham's strong faith, God provided for him. Jehovah Jireh, God the provider. Now, this is only one of the times out of many times where God provided for people. God provided food for the Israelites when they were wandering in the desert after escaping Egypt. He also provided guidance and direction for them as well. We see numerous times where people prayed and prayed and God provided for them too. God also provided a way for us to come to know him. And that's through the sacrifice of his own son, Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 26, it says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? I think, yeah. So have you or your family ever really been in a time where it was just really tough, a tough situation, where you were really in need of something? could have been food or money for rent or to pay school fees. Have you guys ever really experienced that real need for something? Maybe it got to the point where things really did run out or there was no way or hope left. And then all of a sudden, a miracle happened and someone helped you out or a way was made to get you what you needed. See, God uses people and us to go and help other people who are in serious need of some things. That's how, also how God provides for us. Now, we, must, we mustn't look at the Bible and think, okay, well, God provided for them like that. You know, maybe God doesn't provide like that for us. God still provides for us as well, just as he provides for the birds who fly in the sky. But in the Bible, we see when people prayed, then God helped them. So sometimes we also need to tell God what we need, what we are in need of, and then God will help us. Now, God might not actually help us in the way that we want him to help us, but God will always help us. And sometimes he helps us in the last minute as well. I've experienced that a lot in my life. God will help, but it will be a little bit last minute. So maybe there's a need that you have. Or maybe there's a need that your family or a family member has. It could be money. It could be food. It could just be help with something, a troubling situation. What do you really need? And I'm saying need and not want. Because when we pray and we believe that God has got us, I'm going to tell you an incredible story. I remember now, um, my husband, so general manager of a gym, and he recently told me that the on one of these days this week, they hardly had any sign-ups. Now, in order for a gym to grow, they need to have people sign up so that they can pay money towards the gym to keep it to keep it going. And his gym had one of the lowest sign-ups in one of the days. And the next day, he was just praying and praying and praying to God on the way to work. And that day, they had the most sign-ups. 
And that just shows a story of strong faith, that when we have strong faith and believe that God will help us in it, that it happens, that God will provide, that God will help us. So if you have a big need or a small need, take it to God in prayer. God listens to us. God loves us. God knows our hearts. Jehovah Jireh, God provides for us. So today our song is called Jireh, which is by Elevation Worship and Maverick City. So please do listen to that song after our prayer today. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you have provided for us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you know our hearts. You know where we are coming from, Lord. Lord, you know the struggles that we are going through or even just the good times that are happening, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you make people more aware of your presence, Lord. Make people aware of how you are providing for them, Lord. Lord, let, it, let us not put it down to coincidence or luck, Lord, but to actually acknowledge that it is coming from you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you have done and everything that you are doing for us, Lord. How you are constantly working in us and through us and, and for us, Lord. Lord, I pray for every person who is watching us or listening to this, Lord, that you be with them. That you bless them, that you just draw them closer to you, Lord. Just open their hearts and their minds to you, especially those that have gone astray. Lord, I pray that you protect us, guard us, and guide us this week. I pray this all in your precious Son, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I hope you have an absolutely awesome week. Please do go listen to the song. Bye, guys. <laughs>